for the Get To The Point Review. Hello everyone and welcome to the Get To The Point Review podcast. I'm your co-host Kelly McKinney of Hohenheim Productions. And I'm your other co-host Josh Gibson from Fourth Wall Players. And today we bring to you something that we should have brought to you tomorrow in the Tomorrow War. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Some, something like that. Yeah. I tried to make it dramatic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so did they. Yes, yeah, yeah, so did they. And uh, in in doing so, in taking a look at the Tomorrow War from 2021 with Chris Pratt, we're also going to be taking a look at our top five sci-fi movies, and we did have some restrictions. Yes. We went with movies, first of all, rather than TV shows. Exactly. And? And uh, they couldn't be part of a series, so Back to the Future and Star Wars, they'll be on their own list. Um, also, uh, since Tomorrow War all takes place on Earth, we decided these all should take place on Earth as well, or at least on a single planet. Right, yeah, we're on a single planet, yep. I can totally, which, which, one of my, one of my choices cheats. Oh no! One of my choices cheats, but you'll see that it's like, kind of, just barely. Okay. Just barely. So. Uh, but okay. I mean, these are self-imposed rules, so they, you know, they you are. can do no, no, but, you want. but you know what, but it, it made it made it more fun right because then also some of the things that <clears throat> i would have picked can be picks for another episode sometime exactly yeah, yeah that's that's kind of what fun. my thinking was going into it yeah so we'll be able to sort of rinse and repeat this topic with other bylines or bylaws yeah and kind of wrap <laughs> around to it to ones that we missed. i also i didn't i didn't use this as a as a disclaimer when i was talking to you but i guess in my mind i was like to me sci-fi specifically like refers to um technology being what drives the you know, fiction as opposed to like, you know, magical stuff. You know what I'm saying? So to yeah. me, there's a, there's, a, there's a line between sci-fi it and was, fantasy that sometimes get crossed. But it was definitely interesting <clears throat> looking at my list. Like a, I had a list of like 20 films that right. I ended up choosing from. Yeah. And um, when I was, especially when I was brainstorming, like, what are my favorite sci-fi movies of all time? Mm-hmm. I was like, shit, what defines sci-fi? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's, some it's of such it, a Broad it's topic so anymore. broad. So so many things could fit into the sci-fi mm-hmm. category. Mm-hmm. Um, hot tub time machine. Hot tub sci-fi. time machine could be considered. It's not on my list, but no, it is it's sci-fi. not on my list either. <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, Josh, what did you think about the Tomorrow War 2020 with Chris Pratt? All right. So I uh, might get to the point review on the Tomorrow War. Uh, Chris Pratt stars in this movie about a war in the future that spends about a quarter of its runtime in the actual future. Apparently this was just a cleverly disguised movie about midlife crises and not repeating the sins of your father. Uh, J.K. Simmons was Jack, though. That's a good note. J- <laughs> you know, J.K. Sim- J. Simmons and Chris Pratt were both great in this movie. I just don't know that it was a really great movie. It just wasn't, like, uh, there was a lot of great performances and fun characters. You may be surprised. But yeah, it was just all over the place. I didn't cry. I'm not surprised at all. You're not surprised that it Like, they tried to make the whole bit with his daughter falling to her death sad, but I'm just over here like, you're erasing that by fixing it in the past. So, yes, exactly. Why is this being played out? Agreed. I didn't understand that. Yeah, and I I summarized to say that it's a movie that teaches us that you'll never be happy living the family life unless you can save the human race from (laughs) extinction. Naturally. And the white spikes are fun, but Starship Troopers did it better. Mm-hmm. I, I will say, I did think the white spikes were a pretty decent, especially for CGI, they were, were a pretty decent um, yeah. monster, yeah. alien monster sort of thing. That, that's I, th- <clears throat> I thought they did a great job on the white spikes. And they like, showed them a lot, too, which they, was Which, which was, was great, which yeah. was refreshing, because it... Uh, well, because we, we don't have one of those Cloverfield situations going on. Right. Well, I feel like monster. I feel like in modern day, because of like CGI and the limitations or whatever behind it, you either get very rarely shown to just try to because that's how it's scarier is when you don't see it a lot, or it is shown a lot and it's kind of funny because it's like wow that looks like a cartoon. Yeah. Well, now we know the reviewer loved this. Uh, he movie. did. He did. He had an um, affair with this movie. Well, which which was interesting because reading it, I agreed with a lot of his points. Right, I did, but he just failed to bring up the negative, the negative stuff. <laughs> right, right. 
Um, and so let's talk about real quick what is wrong with this movie. Um, yeah, so uh, my, uh, do we want to do the review on the reviewer? Yeah, we can, or yeah, just whatever speak? brings it to it, yeah. Cause I don't, because my thing is, like, I can't place my finger on what exactly was wrong. It just felt half-assed. Like, that's, that's all I can say. Like, they didn't know if they wanted to be dramatic, then they added in the weird comedy stuff, which, by the way, none of it was very funny. No, I, I you know, I, I think I maybe chuckled <clears throat> at one joke through the entire movie. Right, and then like they have like these characters uh, when they first get to the future, and again, this is part of the idea they rush the whole future part of the storyline. So like you have an entire movie in a thirty-minute segment, basically, of them going to the future, you know, trying to get out of the war zone, and then him going back to the past eventually. Like it's it's like thirty-five minutes of the movie, and it's a two 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 hours eighteen minutes or something. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so like when they first get there, you've got those two like scared not trained at all um semi main characters the 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 girl and the fat guy um yeah 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 they're all like i don't know what the hell's going on and like 3 minutes later they're like go i'm going to heroically sacrifice myself so you can get away and i was like well, okay i mean that's that's cool but it would have been cooler in a movie that took time to develop them growing okay and i laughed at an unintentional part because was the that chick it? that's that <laughs> yes because because the the chick from i think Saturday night live Right, that was the female. Oh, Mary Ratch Scoob. She's in yes. a lot of things. I don't know if she's ever in SNL, but she's done a, she's lot, done a lot of, of comedies. comedies. Yes. Okay. A so lot. I recognized her right away as a comedy. Actor. I don't. I don't know if my name was right. Rad. It's a weird spelling of a yeah, name. Yeah, but I. I still, regardless, I recognized her right away as a comedy. <clears throat> actor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So her fierce yell. Yeah. At her death scene. I laughed. That's I laughed. A, I laughed. And and it's. And I don't even think it's against her. It's the way that it that part was mm -hmm. directed mm -hmm. um, also it killed me that when when the big guy fell in between the rafters and went down well now we just sacrificed two soldiers yeah stopping to try to save somebody that you literally have to be running at top speed to get away from these white spikes right and, and yet you think you have time to ha help someone hobble away my my most infuriating the most infuriating thing to me about this entire movie was the inconsistency of how bullets work. Oh my! Yeah. Because in the stairwell, they unload clips upon clips mm -hmm. upon clips mm -hmm. at a few white spikes coming mm -hmm. down the stairwell mm -hmm. to no avail. As soon as they get into close, cl as soon as they're in close quarters, all of a sudden everybody has explosive rounds. Right, it's, it's like, it's almost like they were going through a video game, and in the beginning, it's hard to kill the monsters, but you get, like, upgraded weapons as it goes through, and so, like, it's, it's super easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you're right, the inconsistency was definitely there. Yeah, and, and that, that was, to me, that was the most infuriating part of the movie, is what hurts these things and what doesn't, because mm -hmm. uh, the white spike should have been dead a long <laughs> time ago, or there should be consistently hardened, in which case, why the hell don't you have better guns? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that I was, you know, because of the inconsistency of how effective guns were, when they finally showed up with, like, the fifty caliber and was, like, blasting on them, I was like, yes, that's, right. what, that's what every soldier should have from the get-go for the simple fact of what we've seen mm -hmm. white spikes are capable mm -hmm. of and how they take damage. Well, again, the other part that I thought, and I don't know if this may be inconsistency, it's a movie went out of its way to try to be like Chris Pratt is a scientific genius or whatever. I uh, yeah. When yes. his scientific prowess, okay, fine. You guys wanted to think outside the box. He still ended up winning the day by ramming a motorcycle into a frig or not a motorcycle, a, 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 a snowmobile, snowmobile. Yeah. And in, into the friggin' mo alien. Right. Um. It w he was an action guy, and like all of his good attributes, quote unquote in the future were the fact that he had experience in the military and he was like that's and seeing that that was what irritated me about the, like okay when when it comes to the review all mm -hmm. right he summarizes that he's got he's a scientist with an ex-military background which is just perfect and fine and, and dandy yeah and he that's acts actually like it's such super a, rare yeah mm -hmm. like what what uh, and I there are so few scientist types that are like, yeah, I'm gung, gung ho. Let's wait, go blow shit up. But my thing is, when they set it up that like, oh, he's this big science, you know, like he's he's a big scientist and he's have him he, be one he's, or the other. He he's promoting. I'm fine with him even being both, but he's promoting his daughter to grow up and be interested in science. 
I thought the answer was going to be scientific. Rather than family? Yeah, family. <laughs> rather than rather than family? Right. I, it to be, I, I thought it was very interesting that they spent... Um, yeah, the, the, there was a lot of wasted storylines like yeah. that they pursued for no reason, I feel like, that, that, that ended up going nowhere, and then mm-hmm. they're like, well, actually, now we're doing this. Uh, for instance, when they first jump into the future. Like, yeah. Okay, so is the stuff in the science lab, is that actually a priority, or isn't it? Because you're getting ready to blow up the city whether you have the information or not. Right. So what's the priority? Are you guys working together mm-hmm. or against each other? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was a problem. So when it comes to... Okay, I just want to make sure I got this right. <laughs> you chose a review by the Jewish I Lions. Did. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I was like, that's awesome. St. Louis the, Jewish. Um, the St. Louis Jewish Life. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. I was like, this is the right article, right? Okay, anyway. Yeah, this is the correct article. Uh, I, but I, think I just thought it was hilarious. Dan Buffa? Yeah. Or is it Buffa? Buffa? I don't know. Okay. We apologize. I, I did enjoy the review. Sorry, Dan. Um, but I do have to say, you can praise a movie... Give it a great score and still talk about what's wrong with it. Welcome to the Get the Point Review Podcast. Woohoo! And he really ends the review on a high note, though, with the uh, stubble joke, with the perfect stubble joke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that <coughs> was pretty great. I, I laughed. I laughed out loud at that part of the review for sure. Hmm. Uh, great review of the movie, but he again he doesn't talk about what's wrong with it. At all? So, no, not at all. Not at all. And it, do you have anything different for your review um, of the review? Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, my get to the point review of uh, Dan is I agree that it was not complex. I like Chris Pratt as much as anyone, but this guy is obsessed with him. He gives way too much credit to the movie's half ass attempt at science. It's sad when a review for an action movie doesn't once mention the action sequences. And if it did, I forgot about it. So I don't remember him mentioning anything about the action. He mostly was gushing over Chris Pratt's leading man charisma and the fact that he was a scientist soldier. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could, I, 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 I could see that. Yes, he did. I, I, I think he, he very briefly mentioned the action. Maybe okay. It was I, like at the beginning of one. I must have crash. skimmed over it. I don't know. I, I don't remember. If it, if he did, it was like so inconsequential. I don't remember it, but. Well, so it's interesting that you brought up that he didn't focus on, like, that this movie really did very little sciencing for our main character being a scientist. Yeah. Okay, like actual science. You both your main characters, really. Yeah, right. For both of them <laughs> being actual scientists, we did very little. We did very little real science right. for that. Which brings me right into my first get to the point review. Honestly. All right. Okay. okay. So, top five sci-fi movies, standalone films that <coughs> occurred on Earth. I'm going to start it off. Start us off with Swamp Thing, 1982. Mm. Okay, and before I even get to the get to point review on this, the reason why this comes to mind is because even when I rewatched this, um, I was blown away by the science that they were actually talking about. They talked about mm-hmm. very real science, and if you don't know what they're talking about, you're kind of lost. You're lost. They're literally planting animal nucleus into plant cells Mm -hmm. um, to try to create like a super soldier kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I loved the backstory and Mm -hmm. Swamp Thing's powers. I just think Wes Craven kind of phoned this one indirectionally as far as the script and action decisions. Uh, Because Wes Craven, we already, everyone knows, he is an amazing horror director. Right. So the, the horror elements that made it into this <coughs> were great, but I feel like the action sequences, especially the ones that involved um, like hand-to-hand combat, mm-hmm. were just so lame and campy. Like It, it took you out of um, thinking Swamp Thing's a badass. Right, <laughs> You right. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I grew up with this on VHS, so I watched it ton, tons of times as a kid. Hmm. and loved Swamp Thing's powers and, like, the story that they built for him and that he's, like, one with the swamp. Right. Really loved that. Uh, but, yeah, that that is my first one. Have you seen the 1982 Swamp Thing? I'm not, I've watched uh, the one season of it that uh, Arrowverse did. Or, oh, uh, okay. HBO Max or whichever, okay, gotcha. DC. So I haven't seen that yet. <clears throat> I have not seen that yet. It's kind of boring. Well, this, uh, yeah. Well, and 
Uh, I can't say that the Swamp Thing 1982 version is boring. Right, uh, right. Because it's just kind of crazy. Well, it's a, it's a lot of standing around and talking about Swamp Thing. Um, oh, okay. They, you know, they, they get doing stuff the last couple episodes, but for the most part, it's just it's like, a, it's a who of... am I? You know. Right, okay, um, gotcha. Like, we get it. <laughs> right. <clears throat> nice. All right, you're uh, first. So my first uh, Get to the Point review, uh, Blade Runner. Um, I know technically there was a sequel, but it has, you know, the first one was not made with a sequel in mind. Um, uh, Harrison Ford takes a break from historic trilogies to star in this futuristic movie as a cop uh, asked, or tasked sorry, with chasing down Rutger Hauer and ending him. Uh, fantastic visuals and score. Yeah, and I, I avoided this one for the simple fact that it's like number one on every right. single sci-fi movie list that Fair I've enough. seen. That's why I didn't go into too much detail either, because right, like right, everyone, well, everyone knows. Because everyone knows how great Blade Runner is. Right, right. right. And, but... But thinking about Blade Runner did inspire quite a few on my list for the simple fact that I was thinking of these movies where they built a rich and complex <clears throat> um, and somewhat realistic view of what the future could be if such and such happens. And it still holds up. Like, I just rewatched it four or five months ago, maybe. And, like, the, 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 the effects and everything are still amazing. They are. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, you see a lot of movies, like, from the 80s or whatever, and, you know, like, it's like, oh, okay, well, that's a puppet, or, oh, well, that's some really bad acting, or whatever. But, like, no, this really was done and shot very, very well. Yeah. Well, and, and so <clears throat> going right back into movies that were pretty much probably on every sci-fi list, I'll go ahead and jump into Looper, 2012. I figured you would do Looper, so I, I did yeah. not. I abstained. Uh, I, I, I don't know I, I don't I you know I mean I do know why I love this movie but there's definitely plenty of things wrong with it right you know but jo Jorson Jorson Water <laughs> you heard me <laughs> 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 to summarize Looper for 2012 <clears throat> Joseph Gordon Levitt loses a Bruce Willis lookalike contest mm -hmm. but wins my heart in this time hopping it man thriller mm -hmm. because yeah Joseph I, I never get enough of George, Joseph Gordon Levitt he is. I mean, brilliant. Yeah, and I I really do like the story. Mm -hmm. So the, for the simple fact that you have Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who's super expressive, and who you can like take seriously in everything he does, you can you take him seriously in right. Third Rock from the Sun. <clears throat> right. Well, I think he um, has that knack of uh, like he's known from a young age that um, even when you're being in a comedy and you're trying to be funny, your character is not trying to be funny. Your right. character yes. is completely serious. Believes what they're and saying. And that is what makes the situation funny. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah, no, I love Joseph Gordon-Levitt, so... Do you have jo any Joseph Gordon-Levitt on your list? I actually do not. Oh, no, I do. Never mind, I do. It's down there. Um, so, yeah, I'll do my next Joseph Gordon-Levitt one right now. And I don't know if you have it, too, but it's probably something... It's common. Probably not. Uh, my next Get to the Port review is Inception. Nope. Um... It's a dream within a dream within a dream. Uh, this all-star cast and director had people questioning the ending for years. In my opinion, the top definitely started to sway. Not that it matters, though, because the top, I think, was Mal's uh, familiar, not Cobb's. But that's my opinion. I am not as an, an Inception fan. Oh, I did have a second part. Inadvertently inspires Doctor Strange. Inadvertently <laughs> inspires Doctor Strange. Nice. Mm -hmm. I'm just not an Inception. I'm not fan. like a crazy like. Um, my wife is like every once in, like every six months she's like let's watch Inception. I'm like ugh, we like, watched it, you know, and it's cool. It's got some cool. It's like it's like the Matrix to me. Like it's a good movie to watch and to know that you've watched it and maybe revisit every few years or whatever. But See, the difference for me is that the Matrix definitely has rewatchability. Uh, pretty much every time I see it. Now now. Don't get me wrong. It's Matrix two thousand and one. Mm -hmm. I've oh, yeah, ninety nine actually ninety nine. Holy fuck! I've still see, regardless. I have seen it like over a hundred times. I have no exaggeration. I've seen the Matrix over a hundred times. Like I enjoy the movie. I just don't and get the like cult fanaticism that comes with it. It's because of the allegory for how or it's because of okay, the yeah. parallels of the allegory of how our system today. Works. I get it. No, I mean. That's the fascination with it. That is, it's it's a reminder that you know. Uh, uh, okay, for instance, in, in, in <clears throat> Fight Club, you know what I mean. We have no great war. Our war is a spiritual war, etc., etc., etc. Every generation wants to feel like they're a part of something, and so these 
people like myself who believe that the system is basically working against us, right? You know, and and kind of enslaving us. Mm -hmm. It's a reminder as to what the fight is and how prominent it is in our world today. Kind of thing. Th I think that's where the rewatchability comes into it. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a um, recruitment video for yeah. <laughs> uh, for anonymous. So to speak. You do know you like I mean? conspiracy theories? No. Um, do you like conspiracy theories? Do you want to fight the future? Um, yeah, that kind of thing. So, so I I get with them, and, and I don't have that with Inception. Like right. I can't I can't even picture it having that sort of rewatchability unless you just miss the plot line. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. And that and that's kind of what I was getting at. Like it was fun to watch. But it's not something I want to watch a thousand times over because I wasn't that confused. I feel like that happens a lot. People are really confused by open endings. Yep. And yes. I'm just like, the whole point right. is for you to, is is for you to, to decide. draw your own conclusion. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So and there is no of, definitive answer. Right. And and how you decide the story ends kind of tells a lot about yourself. It, it's it's right. a, it's 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 an exercise in self discovery, is what it comes down to. And yeah, what we've discovered is most people want to be told what to believe. <laughs> Right, exactly. And that's why they don't know what happened, and they mm -hmm. want a fixed ending. They want, you know, uh, Inception. Is that Ridley Scott? No, that's um, Christopher Nolan. Chris, yes, yeah, Mr. Soup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, right, and like, yes, they just want Christopher Nolan to tell them, yeah, how it went, and that's sorry, that's not that's not how art works. Yeah, it's personal. Right, every time. Um, okay, speaking of personal, <laughs> all right, we'll go into my next one, mm. which would be Snowpiercer 2013. Mm. Is that on your list? Maybe. <laughs> nice. Oh, well, I said cannibalistic Captain America seeks to wage civil war against the ultimate Ed Harris with Ollivander at his side in this excellent sci-fi movie. Uh, they did a really good job world building. Oh my gosh, yeah. The the fact that the whole thing takes place on a train, but you feel like you're still living. Like it's in a like whole an adventure world. film. Yes, but yeah. it's an adventure film. It is really amazing. It, I'm. It makes me very curious about the about the series. Yeah, um, it, not to mention the series has David Dig, so that's two points it has going for it. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> right. Which. Which the interest, the most interesting thing to me about the series is that after watching the movie, mm -hmm. I would want them to pick up after the train wrecked. Mm, they probably don't. No, I, I guarantee it's about the eighteen years. Yeah. Leading or it's up like to, another train or something. Or it could be yeah, it could could be another train. Right. right? Um, but yeah, I can almost guarantee it's it's the eighteen years before mm -hmm. and not about um, what's going on. Like you know, it could be about the first revolt. Ten years in, yeah, when people right. decided, mm -hmm. you know, when the people at the front of the train decided they needed to to keep the population right. at a reasonable number. Yeah. Um, thanks, Thanos. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Thanos. Now we're all thinking about population <coughs> control. Uh, okay, so how so, would you survive? So my get to the point review on Snowpiercer: global warming. Um, let's get on the Hogwarts Express. <laughs> Chris Evans leads a gang of riotous back of the buzzers who fight their way to the man in charge only to realize the actual horrors happening in this once magical setting. Could anyone say child slave labor? That was a pretty crazy twist. It was. Yeah, uh, and at the same time, what confused me about it is that that only works for so many pieces. Yeah. Like when another piece wears out, like if it's a gr if it's a grinding gear, mm -hmm. a kid can't do that. That's true. Well, <laughs> <laughs> unless you depends on how dark you want to go. Unless you play his elbow <laughs> with with uh, bronze, um, then you know, yeah. So I thought that was pretty insane. Also, I thought it was uh, crazy that um, you know, as far as we know, Chris Evans isn't going to make it. Right? It's just the Oh no, he definitely the, the two kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just the yeah, the girl and the kid. Yeah. And so we spend all this time caring for this character that doesn't make it. See, you know, that was a movie that did it right with the um, killing off of your cast as it goes. It wasn't everyone died at once. You know, like yeah. you yeah, got yes. to you got to know them all and you got to like them all, and it was like seriously surprising when they did die for the most part. Right. You know. Yep. 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 Um. So yeah. And I, they did a great job of making you hate the enemies in this too. 
oh, the bad God. guys. Tilda Swinton. Jesus. Tilda Swinton is amazing. Yeah. Oh gosh, love her to death. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so wait, so you just did Snowpiercer? I just right? did Snowpiercer. So as well, back yep. to me. Yep. All right. Well, then uh, to kind of throw a loop in our um, uh, kind of throw a wrench in our gears here. Uh oh. Um, I'm gonna go with next 2007. <sighs> yeah, you remember this Nicolas Cage film? No. No, I, I remember it happening. You remember it <laughs> happening. Okay, well, Nicolas Cage uses clairvoyance to win the For the Pussy Challenge in mm. this action romance as he saves the world to get with Jessica Biel. Mm. A worthy cause. 2007 Jessica Biel, not mm. CrossFit Jessica Biel. <laughs> Still, though. Anyway. So, this is the thing. So, you, you haven't seen it. I it was uh, playing when I worked in the movie theater, so okay. I've seen a bunch of bits of it, but no, I've not sat down and watched it so all the way through. This is the th I I have no idea what like the ratings are on the film as far as critic ratings like are probably RT. low, probably pretty low, mm -hmm. yeah. But there are a few lines and a few action sequences in the film that mm -hmm. make it stand out for me. Okay. Um. First of all. Uh, like and I don't know why I'd always had a thing for Jessica Biel, so uh, 2007. That's when we graduated high school, so I, yeah, I definitely had a thing for Jessica Biel at the time. Um, never had a thing for Nicolas Cage though. <laughs> Not you know, really. of course he's got his standout roles, uh, but this was one of those times where, for me, Nicolas Cage didn't ruin the film. You know, like being in the mm. being mm -hmm. the leading man didn't ruin the film. It's the writing oh, yeah. that bug that bugs me about the film, um, and mainly so about like, especially that sort of ending action sequence mm -hmm. kind of uh, kills it for me as far as yeah. being a great great film. I've definitely seen that. So but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love the concept. I love parts of the execution, uh, and I love <clears throat> their choice of uh, of romanced lady. Mm, yeah. So so next was one of those ones that it doesn't, you know, it may not occur to people that it's sci-fi. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, but it's about a guy who can see two minutes into the future. So, and only two minutes. Except for her. But we'll get to that later. It's from the film. Will we? No. It's from, it's from <laughs> the film. That's from the film. Okay, anyways. Um. Well, I don't really have a tie-in for either one of my remaining two, so my next get to the point review is A Quiet Place. Um, story involving invading aliens who hunt by sound. Uh, the main family struggles to live in this post-apocalyptic landscape and avoid the monsters. First legitimately suspenseful sci-fi I had watched in years. Um, the se and a lot of it was the sound design, and it was fantastic. Um, yeah. It had you, like, it was so quiet. You know, you're, like, leaning in to hear to hear it, and then, like, boom, you know, it's like, yeah. oh, God. You and know? you get and it. And it throws you off. Oh, God, it's such, oh, man. And John Krasinski, oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, but... Yeah. To me, it's interesting because John Krasinski is uh, a lot like Jordan Peele. Okay. In the sense that, sort of, I don't, know, I, I don't know. I, I guess no one expected um, Get Out from Jordan Peele. No. After Nobody years did. of comedy. Right. Uh, and after years in the office as Jim for. For John Krasinski, mm -hmm. then he comes out with this again, a horror film, yeah. comedy. Some, someone who, as far as you know, our right. relation to them in yeah, shows, I, it goes comedy. I'm a little bit of an exception to that role because I saw him in a movie before The Office came out. Uh, it was a David Schwimmer independent film, like Dwight Schrute or something. I don't know. It was about a guy in midlife crisis, sort of thing, and um, you know, uh, John Krasinski was like his ex-wife's new boyfriend or something I, I actually don't remember it was so long ago i watched it but so yeah i mean and I, i've also always been of the opinion that it is harder for dramatic actors to do comedy than it is for comedic actors to do drama yeah and we've discussed that a lot because of so much of yeah. comedy is reliant on like specific timing timing yeah <clears throat> and, so. and and not feeling stupid doing what you're doing right yeah and go, and yeah going all out and taking yes. risks and Take doing risks. all that stuff yep. so yep yeah, uh, interesting. Yeah, because, okay, so, but is that a standalone film? I guess it didn't make a sequel eventually. I, 
I look at it as a, I haven't seen the sequel, but I look at it as a standalone film just because John Krasinski died at the end. So yeah, so as far as I'm concerned, this is what's interesting. I know it had a setup, I guess, but about the sequel, a lot of people hated it, and I watched it and loved it. I thought it was every bit as good as the first one. Uh, uh, the problem is people almost. expect. The, the thing is, when you try to do sequels in certain aspects, I feel like a, a quiet place. Whereas it would have been a good movie at any time, the time it came out, it, I felt like made it a lot more relevant. Yeah, you know, well, it definitely stood out because everything else that was coming out in the horror genre was things like Insidious. Right, exactly. And you know, but the after a Quiet Place for, came out, everything else was like, oh, Hush, and you know, uh, Bird Box, uh, which was yeah, Bird Box, yeah, 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 Deaf, but they were blind. It was a different yeah, you know, it was just a take different sense. Take but, away. Yes. Um, yeah, so that kind of became the thing. So by the time A Quiet Place 2 comes out, it's like, okay, we're, we're tired of this now. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, I'm, I'm glad that you that you had one that didn't quite meet the fight. Yeah, yeah, I totally forgot about that. I've never, I've not seen the sequel yet, so I totally forgot about it, but yeah. Oh, it, it's good. It's worth seeing. I mean, I will. I just have it. Well, then my last one on the list, which breaks our rule just <laughs> a little bit, is Total Recall from 1990. I mean, it was a remake. No, uh, uh, because the reason why it breaks our rules is because the whole thing doesn't take place on Earth. They go from Earth to well, Mars. Like I said, mine Mars was as long as it's on a planet. Yes, And yeah. there's no ship involved, right? Well, I mean, they take a ship to Oh, uh, I guess they do. But yeah. it's, it's like literally a 20-second sequence. Right, exactly. Yeah, Because right. I was going to do Total Recall. Uh, that was one of the, That was one of my finals, but I didn't end up going with it. Okay, but well, all right. So before anyway. I get to my review on it, why? Why Total Recall for you? I was just thinking of sci-fi movies I liked, um, and I was thinking of a lot of Arnold ones, and that was one of the few <laughs> ones that I could think of that wasn't a series. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, too, that yeah. and Running Man, but I didn't want to do a thing about Running Man. Right. For me, I grew up, this is another one that I grew up with on VHS, mm -hmm. and so, to summarize Total Recall 1990. Mm -hmm. I didn't totally recall what this movie was about when I was a kid, but right. as an adult, <laughs> I see that it's an ambitious endeavor to yeah. create good sci-fi with an awful lead actor, and that's what it comes down. That to. That was pretty much Arnold Schwarzenegger's career. Yeah, it really. I mean, really, it is, man. Like I, I. But he fits so many roles so well physically and like, um, from the standpoint of. And, and that's what kills me about this because, watching Total Recall, he is the. I mean, okay. It's an incredibly graphic movie, um, both from the violence to even the puppets that they use for like mutants. And right, right, else. right, right. Like you know, incredibly graphic. Definitely like when I say a product of the times in 1990, I mean in the sense that everything was these grotesque and shiny Blood practical movies. effects. Yeah, like if you th <laughs> yeah, like well, I mean if you think of the thing. You yeah, know, mm -hmm. like the practical effects that they had in that. That's what the puppets and everything in this. Yeah, the 80, me of. yeah, eighties was really big about the practical effects, especially in like sci-fi and horror. And they, um, that that's what they did really well. And yeah. The only thing that takes me out of the film, um, well, not the only thing, but primarily, <laughs> it's Arnold Schwarzenegger's line deliveries, because I, I don't know if 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 it's just his accent, or if he earnestly doesn't understand the line deliveries which uh, I'm leaning more towards his accent I, for the simple I, yeah, fact I, that we've seen him uh, seen and heard him speak intelligibly yeah that, where he at least knows what the hell he's saying right yeah I think <laughs> it's his accent because if, if you notice farther in his career the better he gets it gets way better yeah so for sure. I mean like for instance <clears throat> his his appearance in the newer Terminator movies when he makes those cameos mm -hmm. those are great mm -hmm. those are great like yeah, or I him don't in the feel like I'm watching he's fun yes yeah I don't feel like I'm watching him in the 90s mm -hmm. I, you're right you're, yeah it's it definitely gets a lot better with age um, but then look at him in Conan and you're just like oh my Oh boy! Or listen to the commentary from yeah. him on Conan. <laughs> he he explains the movie as you're watching it. Oh my! It's really funny. Uh, <laughs> okay, I've got one left. You do? I do. Yep. Yeah, you, you at first, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, I think, uh, but I do have one left. So okay. uh, my last get to the point review to get us away from all this serious drama, the world's end. Uh, the Sean uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost movie okay. about the you know them doing the pub crawl. Yep, 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 yep. Um, Gary King is facing a midlife crisis in the middle of an alien invasion. Uh, or he's facing a midlife crisis. Yeah, uh, his glory days. He in an attempt to. 
I like I like rewarded this so many times. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> so Gary King is facing a midlife crisis, uh, in an attempt to relive his glory days. He invites his old gang to their hometown for a bar crawl in the middle of an alien invasion. There we go. Uh, the foreshadowing mixed with the intense fight choreography helps sell the humor and story. Um, because they, I mean, it's, it's like all the other, you know, it, the other two in the Cornetto trilogy, is they pretty much foreshadow the entire movie at the beginning, which I love. Because you don't, obviously, the first time watching it, you don't realize it, right? Um, but then it's, it's what, something that's really fun to go back through and watch it again. It's like, oh, okay, so they mentioned that this is going to happen multiple times, or, you know, things like that. So I think that stuff's really cool. Right. Uh, and what's funny is that I, I'm familiar with the movie, as in I am aware of its existence. I haven't yeah. seen that one. Uh, I haven't seen that one. My favorite Simon Peck movie is Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead is has a special place just because it was like his first big movie. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, and not only that, but it was for me it was the first worthwhile comedy about the zombie apocalypse. Easily. Easily. Uh, I mean, e even more. It, it kind of created an entire then. subgenre. It really did. It did. It really did. And you know, it, like, yeah. Just you see things like Zombieland or Warm right. Bodies, and nothing or had done it. I mean, and as much as I love Zombieland, it still doesn't do it better than Shaun insane. of the Dead. No, no, no. I think the fact that it's uh, um, the fact that they're British just mm -hmm. adds an extra layer of. This droll sarcasm that comes with the end of the world, yeah, that blends perfectly with the somber, yeah, attitude that the end of the world really would bring. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I also think uh, this is something that Simon and and Nick, um, and you know their their company or whatever that they do really well is again, like I said earlier, they take their char their characters take themselves seriously. Yeah. They are not trying to be funny. They are they're distressed or they're upset or whatever and it's coming across as funny just because of the way it's filmed or whatever right and yeah it's okay. great for instance if you take the you know let's take a look at Shaun of the Dead mm -hmm. if you take the scene out where he has to kill his mother yeah oh, if you gosh. take that out of the the film as a standalone <clears throat> scene away from the comedy mm -hmm. you could feel something for him you can tell he is distressed he looks like he is on the verge of tears if not crying right. even in the comedy you can yeah like no, it's no, a sad like, scene yeah it is. It, and you like genuinely feel for him in an american comedy film there's no points where you genuinely feel for the you know what i mean like mo most american comedies you know that that's why they created the rom-com drama I mean, yeah, the, the, the rom-com genre. It's mindless, you know, whatever. But right. Yeah. So, yes. No, I agree. No, I and I think it's really... I mean, I'm not over here to say it's, like, the best movies ever made or anything, but I really like them. I enjoy all three of them, you know. No. It's one of those films where I would, ha I would have troubles coming up with what's wrong with it. Right. For the simple fact that its comedy would explain away any plot hole problems that mm -hmm. I would have with mm -hmm. any other film and it's so straightforward. Yeah. Like it's 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 genuine and it's sincere and you know I mean it's it's like it's like they it's like they advertise it. It's it's a love story with zombies. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, it really is, yeah. <laughs> and that's his motivation is to save his girlfriend. Right, yeah. 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 So it's great. Anyway. It's a, it is a great one. Okay. Well and and uh, I'm gonna go first. Mm -hmm. Uh, looking to start a podcast? Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. With Buzzsprout, you'll get a great looking website, audio players you can drop, detailed analytics, tools to promote, and more. Following the link in the show notes lets Buzzsprout know we sent you. Gets you a $20 Amazon gift card if you sign up for a paid plan and help support our show. Let's create something great together with Buzzsprout. And I'm a firm believer that a gentleman wears a watch. The art of watchmaking is timeless, boasting science, sophistication, and feats of engineering. Upgrade your gentleman game by checking out the elegant and fashionable collections of watches by Aventino. Aventino watches are simple, their designs go with everything, and their craftsmanship is of the highest standards. Mm. Save 15% on your order with the code HOEN15 and join the Aventino lifestyle. My watch itself is of the Gemini series. Oh my. I thought I had it sitting right here. Where is that beautiful boy? 
I probably have it in a golden case somewhere. Um, I've seen it a couple of times, and uh, I want to go out and get one. I used to love wearing watches, and then I worked in restaurants, and I was like, eh, what's the point? Yeah. But I don't anymore, so, you know, yeah, no, well, get a watch, 15% off. Sounds great. Yeah. The code HOEN15, that's all lowercase. HOEN15. HOEN15. All right. Yeah, and so uh, it, it's interesting. I, I have a lot of watches. Most of them are just like fashion watches that yeah. I spent no more than like 10 bucks on. But I love this watch. <laughs> I really That's do. That's great. That's it's, awesome. It is a really good I mean, it, look, it looks great, yeah. I, 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 I love it that they boast about being a gentleman because that's the first thing that comes to mind when I think of a watch. Mm -hmm. A gentleman wears a watch. And right. I go to right. look at their marketing material. They're like, a gentleman wears a watch. I'm like, God damn it. Are, right you, the guy, you, are, are you the guy that does it just straight up or are you the guy that does the weird... No, nope, I, I, I don't get up. this. I, I don't get this up. at all. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I don't like this. I think that's so that when they're holding a drink, they can, if they're le like if they're holding a drink in their left hand, they can still view it. I have no idea. I know it's just so weird. To be like, what, so weird. what? What time is it? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, pour one out for my dad, homies. <laughs> <laughs> while I'm at it. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Oh, yeah. And our, our next episode, we're going to take a look at the Suicide Squad as well as our top five lists for ensemble cast movies. Ensemble cast movies. That's right. So, yeah. again, thanks for listening. We'll see you guys back again in two weeks. Yeah. And like we say in our hometown, <laughs> no cap, no, no stop. stop. <laughs> to get to the point.